Warning. The stories in this podcast contain depictions of violence and suggestive themes. Listener discretion is advised. BLF Agent in Charge 0602, filing report for Project 1980, codenamed Broken. I knew it wouldn't take long for them to find me. The infectious agents of Legion zeroed in on my position again. I haven't heard from anyone else in the BLF for weeks now. I can only keep hopping safe houses and using the visions of the Eldritch Eye to stay ahead of them. The person I killed today was once my friend. I looked into his eyes and saw the person I used to know was long gone. The demon knows I'm close. I may have to go to Highbridge personally if things don't change for the better soon. The only way out of this mess is to keep moving forward. But first, I must bury my friend. Broken. File 306 begin. Subject Aaron Rathman visits Detective Solomon. If the cameras weren't rolling, no one would believe what happened. Then again, there were those that did see everything and still don't know the truth. Broken. File 306. End of report. The station was in chaos. Everyone looked nervous, on edge. I could hear Sheriff Roland yelling at someone in his office as soon as I walked through the doors. I could sense the aftermath of demonic chaos all around. The stench of sulfur hung heavy in the air for only a moment. It was a subtle reminder of the hellish creatures. I wasn't allowed into the room where Detective Solomon's body was. Not sure I wanted to go in there anyway. Instead, I went to the security room pulled up the interview room recording and sequestered myself in front of a computer. There weren't any headphones, and the only portable speakers I could find were older and made the voices sound like they were from an old tape recording. Thanks a lot for coming down, Aaron. No problem. You came earlier than I expected. My partner isn't here yet. I was surprised to hear Detective Solomon call me his partner. I already missed his goofy smile. I'm almost positive this Aaron Rathman person was the unsub. 
but I didn't have enough facts to prove it. Perhaps I could find one or two in the video. Where were you this past Thursday evening? Working. So, if I call your work, they'll be able to confirm that you were there all night. <laughs> Good luck at getting ISB to confirm anything. Their HR sucks. That part was true. I couldn't remember the HR person's name, but I remembered her voice. She, at least I thought it was a she, sounded like someone who chain-smoked menthols every day for 50 years. What was the nature of your relationship with Helen Rathman? She was my ex-wife. And Bradley Linton? He was my best friend. Any reason you could think of why Bradley was at Helen's residence? They were probably fucking. Brad had been acting funny ever since me and Helen divorced. It seems now I know why. So, you knew they were a couple? I didn't put two and two together until I heard they were both killed. It seems a little odd that you don't seem too broken up about it. Helen... Hel Helen was a difficult person at best. When it was good between us, it was terrific. But when it was bad, it was hell. That's why we split. She would get angry at me and at Marcus over trivial things. She was physically abusive and prone to, like, wild mood swings. What about Brett? What about Brad? I can't grieve for my son's mother or my best friend. I'm more upset that he couldn't tell me that they were seeing each other. So, you were upset with him? Damn straight! I'm upset that I can't do anything about it. I'm upset that I can't scream and yell at him. I didn't find out anything until after he died. Now, that asshole gets a free ticket off the planet, and I'm the one left here to suffer and clean up their mess. I don't even know how to explain all of this to my son, much less you or anyone else. Aaron's honesty caught me off guard. I couldn't tell if he was lying or not. I saw Detective Solomon shift in his seat. It was one of his tells that indicated he was getting frustrated with the suspect. All right, then. How about we change the topic? What do you know about Joel Wallace? <laughs> Everyone at ISB knows Wally. Why is that? He was a dick to everyone. All he did all day was kiss the plant manager's ass, hoping for a pay raise or promotion. He stepped over and on a lot of people to make assistant plant manager. Why don't you step me through your Friday, and then we'll talk more about Joel. I kept watching, hoping that I could catch something out of the ordinary. It wasn't until about 30 minutes that I noticed the shadow on the wall behind Aaron grow. Once I saw Aaron's eyes go reflective and flare slightly in the monitor, I knew that I was dealing with someone possessed. I don't know, detective. Perhaps he was just depressed. A guy who's that angry all the time might not enjoy life. Maybe he wanted the quickest way out. Wait, did Aaron's voice change? Yeah. Wanted to take the quickest way out. You have access to a weapon, detective. Have you ever thought of ending it all? Detective Solomon's voice was slightly different, too. I watched as the shadow crept up behind him and blended with his own, making it darker. Detective Solomon's eyes flared for a moment, and I knew that he was possessed, too. Tell you what, I don't think that I have any other questions for you at the moment. Why don't you go back home? And if I need to follow up, I'll give you a call. Sounds good to me. I watched Aaron get up and leave. The tape kept recording as I watched Detective Solomon sit in place for the next 4 minutes and 27 seconds. Just enough time for Aaron to leave the building and drive off. Detective Solomon suddenly looked directly at the camera. His eyes briefly glowed on the screen. Next, he placed his hands on the sides of his head as if he were in pain or contemplating something horrible. 
I couldn't look away as he drew his service weapon, placed it underneath his chin, and pulled the trigger. Tears streamed down my face. It was moments later that several cops rushed into the interview room and the chaos began. We interrupt your local broadcast with breaking news. Police detective Scott Solomon was pronounced dead at the scene from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Sources inside the police department said the 26-year veteran committed suicide inside an interview room at the Highbridge Police Headquarters. Detective Solomon had been assigned to investigate the series of local murders which occurred last Friday and Saturday. There's still no official word on who will be responsible for the internal investigation. Sheriff Rowland told reporters at an earlier press conference that all current investigations are still ongoing and every possible lead is being pursued at this time. This makes five dead in three days with the additional deaths of high school teacher Jacob Walls passing away at 8.45 this morning. Our news agency reached out to Mayor Hart's office for comment. Spokesperson Griffin Utley would only say that they were, quote, briefed on the incident involving Detective Solomon in Mayor Hart's office, will continue working with the Highland Police Department to ensure the safety of the citizens of Highbridge, end quote. I'm Lacey West, and we'll now resume your regular broadcast. Stay tuned to WKIL-TV News for all the latest updates. Stay safe, Highbridge. Supplemental Report Priority Routine for BLF Committee Review File Name Give Me That Old Time Religion The following was recorded on A traveling group of liars, thieves, and con men use religion as their cover to milk a town of their hard-earned money. Little do they know that heaven and hell have had their eye on them for quite some time. The Demon Legion continues to spread its seeds, but the other BLF agents contain the damage. No one can discern the pattern yet. Victory seems more like a dream than a reality at this point. Each win comes at the cost of one or several lives. Adding report to case project file 1980. End of report. Bastards better pick their rolls. All right, Arnold. Y'all decided who's playing what? Or is this gonna be Poughkeepsie all over again? Calm down, Joshua. We've made up our minds. I'm gonna be the blind man, Margaret will be my wife, and Roy will be the usher and handle the merchandise. Excellent. Roar, make sure you push on your recorded sermon. We need to get those copies of Father Joshua Says He Touched Me Sold. <laughs> <laughs> or so funny. Did you ever think that the title might be taken the wrong way? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. That's what I thought. Honored Margaret, get yourself prepared and then scram. Can't have people finding out this is just a racket. Is it really a racket if we don't sell anything? Oh, she's right, you know. We haven't really sold much of anything in a few weeks. We've hit a small speed bump. That's all. Not every city can be Louisville. And besides, 
I got a good feeling about this place. After all, the good book does say that a fool and his money are soon parted. It also says that the Lord will give the wicked their due on a day of disaster. Look at that. We got ourselves a Thomas Aquinas over here. Did God tell you that what I'm doing is sinful and I'll burn in hell as a third-rate heretic? I'm just saying, it's only a matter of time before we're caught. And we won't get caught if y'all keep your mouth shut. I'm looking at you, Margaret. Hey, I didn't think that altar boy would rat us out. Clearly you didn't bribe him with enough money. I could have if we were paid. Again, we just hit a small bump. Things will turn up soon. I promise. Joe and Margaret, here's a 20 you can split. Don't spend it all in one place. I need the change back. Such a kind soul. Bless your heart. Come on, honey. Let's see if I can spot us a good deal. I'll drive. Yes, dear. I don't can't drive if we're supposed to be blind. A misplaced detail like that will destroy the illusion. <laughs> oh, right. I was serious about selling those records. I'd have beat you for that wise crack. But you said you're not playing a cripple today. It's just an observation. One that should have been made in private. I don't need to be embarrassed like this. If you're bent on making me look like an ass, you can get the hell out. You do plenty fine by yourself. They're wise ass. Let's get the shop tent set up. Goddamn lock won't open. Let me try. What can you do? Watch this. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Man, show off. It'll be interesting to set this up with only two people. Ever since George died, it's been hard to find another workhorse, let alone running this operation with just the four of us. George was a good man. Yes, but he died of his own stupidity. Anyone will tell you it's a bad idea to drink while juggling hammers and knives, but he insisted. I can still hear the hammer crack his skull and the knife cut his throat as they fell. Don't remind me. Hand me that pole. Yes, sir. You read anything about the weather today? Should be calm, with maybe a very light breeze. That's what I like to hear. Can't have this tent blow away like in a vela. That hurt my ego. To hell with your ego. What about our needs? You've gotten the lion's share for the past three months and the rest of us have gotten shit. Yeah, I earned. I want my share. Well, I wish Marilyn Monroe was still alive, but we can't get what we want. I will get what I deserve. What the hell? <clears throat> Listen here, you give me 75% of what we earn tonight, plus $50, and then you'll never see me again. Yes, I'll still be the damn usher, but I've had enough of this con. Where are you gonna go? There's nothing but hills and small towns for miles. Pittsburgh's only an hour or so away. You're planning on walking the whole way? No, I'll hit a ride somewhere. Fine, whatever. Since you decided violence was the best way to approach this, you could finish setting up the store tent by yourself. Now get off me before people think there's something funny about this preacher. Make sure the entrance sign is up. God damn asshole. At least I got some liquid courage left in me. Shit. Should have picked some up last night. My luck, this is probably one of those blue law towns where you can't buy alcohol on Sundays. 
What's your read on these people? They seem like pretty easy marks. A number of old ladies have shown up. Also some young widows. Excellent. I've also seen a dad bring his teenage son in the hopes that he stops from becoming a homosexual. At least that's what I gathered from his posture. Yeah, <laughs> like that's gonna happen. Where are Annie and Margaret located? Fifth row on the left. Okay, go ahead and introduce me. Don't forget about my demands or else. You better pray that this town is generous. One can only hope. Alright ladies and gents, I'm so glad that you all came out this evening to see THE Father Joshua Markowski preach the Word of God in his own manner, along with some good old-fashioned healing. My name is Roy, and before we begin, there's some housekeeping. First, Father Joshua asks that you make a goodwill donation, if you're so inclined, so that we may continue to heal those who are sick and in need of the Lord's intervention. We are a traveling ministry, and there are plenty of lost souls who need help beyond this little town. There's also a table set up where you can buy candles, crucifixes, and devotionals written by the man himself, among other things. We also have a new sermon that you can purchase as a record, so you can hear his voice and have renewed belief in the Lord Almighty. And now, without further ado, here's... Father Joshua Makowski. <gasps> Sorry about that, folks. Anyways, like Roar said, I'm Father Joshua Murkowski, and it's a wonderful evening here in Martin's Ferry, Ohio. I gotta say, this town has some spectacular hills. It's a nice change of pace from the flat landscapes of the smaller towns of Indiana and Illinois. Can I get an amen for those hills? Woo! Amen! Thank you, brother. Now, I see some lost souls in the crowd. Souls that yearn to be closer to the Lord. These are the ones that need a special kind of healing. Oh, they have dark clouds above them. I can see them right now, folks. These are the ones with hardship so strong that the devil has convinced them that there is no salvation. I know you've had some people say that your misfortunes are your own actions and you're destined to carry that cross for the rest of your lives. Well, no more, I say. If you truly believe God will heal, I've laid hands upon the lame and they stood up and danced. I've healed those with the most unspeakable of perversions and they came to the Lord. Widows were able to find spouses and the poor found riches after I prayed for them. Folks, I tell you, there's nothing that can't be done if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Father Joshua? Yes? Who said that? Stand up. It was me. If what you say is true, maybe you could help me. We come from the Fallensby area, and my husband here has been blind for a few years ever since the welding accident. He'll never see our children grow up. Do you think you could fix him? As certain as I am of JFK securing a second term next year, step forward and bring him to me. Okay, dear, Father Joshua wants to see you. Now folks, make way for the man. He's already had a difficult life. Watch your step, dear. Thanks. Oh, what's your name, brother? Arnold. Arnold Pulaski. Ah, uh, fellow Paul. Tell me, Arnold, do you have kids at home? Yes, Mama's watching them. How many? Three of them. All girls. Wouldn't it be wonderful to come home and see them again? 
Oh, yes. Yes, it would. So I can safely assume that since you're here, you're a man of faith. I am. We all go to church every Sunday morning. My wife's in Bible study, I'm in the Knights of Columbus, and the kids are in Sunday school. That's wonderful to hear. Now, do you believe? I do. Say it louder. I do. Louder! I do believe. Then let the Lord enter you and be healed with these hands. Do you need any help, brother? <sighs> I think I got it. I think I did it. Did anyone tell you that you look like old blue eyes? Now, how would you know that if you couldn't see? Wait a minute. I can <gasps> see. I can see. Margaret, come quickly so I can look at you again. I thought I'd never be able to see you again. Jimmy Stewart better watch out after that performance. Truly one for the age. And who might you be? People just call me Thomas. Well, Thomas... What can I do for you? You can start by getting the fuck out of town. Now, now, there's no need for that kind of language in here. Bold words for a con artist. Now, what makes you think I'm someone that despicable? I'm here as a servant of the Lord, and you're telling me I'm a fraud? Well, that sounds like someone's being a... A doubting Thomas... Very original. Well, I see. Hey, did you want something? Or are you just gonna be a bitter cripple? I do want something. I want to be healed. I've been this way since I was a child. The doctors weren't able to get feeling back in my legs with whatever science they have. So I've been trying to get it back with these fly-by-night faith healers. Every time I go to have my legs fixed and nothing happens, they lean down and tell me that I don't have enough faith. And then they shoo me away because it's easier to place their failure on someone else who probably can't defend themselves. A blemish on their perceived immaculate record. So then why are you blaming me for their mistakes? I'm doing nothing of the sort. All I'm saying is that if you really cured all those people like you said you did at the start, then I should be a pretty easy to fix. After all, we love a success story. It'll only take a minute. And then you will leave? Certainly. I'll even let you keep my wheelchair as a souvenir. Fine. Get up here. That's gonna be hard to do when the only way to access this stage is with stairs. It's quite telling when you have this set up so only the ones who can walk or hobble up there can be healed of their airs. <sighs> Roar! Help this man on stage. And be careful with my wheelchair. I already had some snot-nosed punks loosen some of the boats, and nobody has bothered to tighten them. <laughs> now can't you just crawl up there? And be a part of your power trip fantasy? Absolutely not. <laughs> Y'all would love to see a helpless cripple on their knees begging the one who walks to show a little pity for the one who can't. You know, you're making this very inconvenient for me. You hear that, folks? He said the quiet part out loud. My existence is an inconvenience, 
not to Mr. Holier than thou, but to all of you. All I seem to do is take up precious space and resources. And our time. Our patience, people. This won't take long. Besides, this little angel desperately wants to be made whole again. I'm not your little angel. I'm a goddamn adult. Tamper, tamper. Almost there. I said careful. You want us to push you off the stage when we're done? No. Then keep your mouth shut and let Father Joshua do his job. Now, all right, folks, settle down. We'll let this little guy have his time in the spotlight before you come up and be blessed. You've embarrassed me enough, you shit-eating Creighton. You're gonna play along or the next time I lay hands on you, it'll be around your throat. Capiche? I understand perfectly well. In fact, I guarantee you'll have the people talking about this for generations to come. Oh, really? You'll see. Very soon. I just spoke to Thomas here, and he has agreed to cooperate with us for this ritual. Our God will it. We won't have any more interruptions. So, Thomas, do you have anything else to say? Preferably something appropriate? The wicked, through the pride of his continence, will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts. Psalms 10.4 Very well. At least you know your scriptures. As I lay my hands upon this lamb, one who has strayed from the flock, I call upon you, Lord, to look upon him and bestow your almighty power so that he may walk again with his brothers and sisters. Let the lame walk, I command you! As it is written, in Ephesians 5, 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. It appears that Father Joshua has done just that. I did tell him that people will talk about this day for a while, and you shall. Father Joshua, please come forward. Uh, I, I can't seem to move. <laughs> what, what, what the hell is going on? That's precisely the idea. Hell. You see, folks? Joshua here wanted to fashion himself a well-respected man with all the riches and fame that come with it. He constructed himself as a false idol, hollow as the promises he made. So I've decided to fulfill his desire, just like any statue you find in a church or a park. He is immobile. This isn't funny, you dirty cripple. Oh, you thought this was funny? You wanted a comedy? Alas, this can only end in tragedy. Oh, death, where is thy sting? I can't get him off me. My eyes are swollen. Somebody help me. I know we've had a rather hot day today, but something tells me it's about to get much worse. Oh my god! He's on fire! <laughs> Roy! Arnold! Margaret! Fucking help me! We can't! There's no source of water anywhere! What do you mean? 
You're fucked, man. Where do you think you're going? Death and destruction lie open before the Lord. How much more do human hearts? Proverbs 1511. Let the Bodies Hit the Floor was written by Arthur Unk and performed by Tanner Wood with an original score by J.M. Scherf. Production and sound design by Tanner Wood. The Calm Before the Storm Part 2 was written by Arthur Unk and performed by Katie Tatry, Eric Phones, J. Philip Morris, and C.M. Peters. Production, sound design, and musical arrangements by Tanner Wood. Give Me That Old Time Religion was written by Zephyr Ash Ostrowski. If I said that wrong, please forgive me and correct me. And performed by T.J. Hotter of The Hotter Show, Eric Phones, Catherine Via, Daniel Barton, and Arthur Unk. Production and sound design by J. Philip Morris. Musical arrangements and episode artwork were by Tanner Wood. Well, now that we're on the back half of our Season 3, I want to reiterate that we're still accepting stories for our Season 4 lineup until the end of May 2024. If you would like to have a short story that you've written featured here on the BLF podcast, please t- take a second to visit our website at baselinefeed.com. There, you can see our open submissions form with what kind of stories we're looking for for Season 4. Yeesh, that's a lot of fours. Anyway, be sure to check out the link in the show notes to our Discord server where you can interact with the BLF directly and even get some inspiration to become a short story writer as well as a voice actor. We're always looking to support those who want to jump into the world of audio dramas. After all, that's what we're here to do. All the links you would ever need are in the show notes.